Hello, you guys. Welcome back to Do I Look Sick? Um, I am Mia, of course, with Sickle Cell Awareness 365, and I'm so happy to have not only my guest co-host, Dr. Rashawn Hodge, but my always co-host, Jennifer. Hey, you guys. I've missed you so much. We'll have to talk about that story later, but I've missed being here. Yes, yeah, so definitely make sure y'all tune in to the next show because we got some good stuff for y'all. But today, we have the wonderful Dr. Rashawn Hodge, who is a chronic pain doctor, who is a wonderful sickle cell advocate and a medical marijuana advocate. So I know a lot of people have been kind of asking me questions to ask him questions or trying to get in touch with him via my Facebook, but <laughs> he is here and you guys can call in. I'm going to give you the number now. So you guys can call in and ask him any questions you want. 470-251-4647. That's 470-251-4647. So, Dr. Hodge. Mia, what's up? So happy to be here. I'm uh, so glad. Yeah, that happy to any gems you need uh, for the sickle cell folks, my soldiers, caregivers. Any questions you have, I hope you uh, love our style of, of teaching. Um, hope you learn a lot and and mind, body, and soul. Absolutely. Cannabis, yeah. Absolutely, I'm so glad we were actually able to come to the studio <laughs> this time. Last year, you came on and dropped so much knowledge. I continue to watch that video because I get different things from it, um, and it was just amazing. I follow you on Instagram, so I'm always checking out what you're doing and how you're helping the community, and I absolutely love it. Appreciate it. <laughs> uh, been in Atlanta 26 years. Uh, I fell in love with it when I first came in here. Um, uh, coming from New Jersey, <clears throat> uh, just the the black wealth, the yeah. people, you know, the southern hospitality, yeah. uh, the professionalism. Um, I was sold, so I'm staying obedient to Atlanta, and my uh, services is for for the people here. We Absolutely. thank you. This is my home, so yeah. we thank you. We appreciate you. Yeah. Um, what do you have new going on since we spoke with you last? Man, I got a lot of stuff. Well, I'm in school. I'm getting my master's at the University of Maryland. Uh, they have a master's of a, a therapeutic cannabis program. It's a two-year <laughs> program. I'm the class of 2022, and I'm forever curious about cannabis now. So what nice. <clears throat> I thought I knew about cannabis, I didn't know much. Okay. And, um, I, I implore uh, not just the master's program, but there's a lot of colleges and universities that are having some type of cannabis in their curriculums. Um, very important um, for the to $53 billion industry in a year and a half. Uh, so I've been busy with that. Um, and we're all waiting, you know. There's about 15,000 Georgians on the, on the registry, and uh, I'm a patient as well. Uh, we're waiting for to, the growers to be announced here in Georgia any day now. Okay. It's any day now. Uh, two large grow, four small, uh, and then University of Georgia in Fort Valley, again, will be growing cannabis. Uh, and then a week or two, the retail applications will become available in our state. Um, I'll be on the website, uh, mm -hmm. Department of Public Health, uh, uh, Georgia.gov, okay. uh, and there should be 30 uh, retail uh, opportunities here in Georgia for the first year and um, I want people to you know be excited about that get their cards and also if you're interested in the business go for it nice. um, so there'll be bud tender jobs security jobs uh, uh, chemist jobs uh, you know all all in the next week or two that you know um, everyone should take advantage of that's awesome to hear yeah. that that was actually one of my questions like what has changed as far as um, cultivating it here, purchasing. What's what's changed since last year? Like she said, since like last year, um, they've just tweaked the bill uh, to allow pharmacies maybe to dispense cannabis oil. Uh, as of now, we're still cannabis oil only. Okay. Uh, no vaping, no patches, no topicals, no um, no suppositories, no MDIs, no transnasal, uh, just oil only. Um, there's been 18, there's a total 18 jurisdictions now that have been decrimmed. Okay. Uh, uh, we added West Point, Georgia. Uh, that was uh, like the 17th. 
Um, so that's good. Under, I mean, we still got to push for statewide decriminalization, but uh, you guys know Clarkson was the first city in Georgia, 2015. Uh, Atlanta was 2016, and then Augusta, Gwinnett, um, Decatur, DeKalb, uh, so on and so forth. Uh, we still have the 17 applicable diseases. Um, 2019, we added autism nice. to the disease. Okay. Yeah, that's the list. That's awesome. and, uh, and if you guys don't know, sickle cell was the original eight, yeah. um, the original eight applicable conditions or diseases for cannabis here since 2015. Right. And uh, I got some news that I hope to, hopefully I can announce in a week or two, you know? Nice. Yeah. Um, nice. Been working so on Are you finding that, like, hematologists and other doctors are becoming more open to using mar medical marijuana? Um, I, I see more doctors signing up for the recommendations. And, you know, when I was doing the recommendations for the state, I was really busy. <clears throat> you know, at first it was a lot of word of mouth, you know. It was a lot of knocking on doors. You know, cannabis was new here uh, to Georgia. Cannabis was very new to caregivers. We only had eight diseases. Um, but a year or two, then you saw more, um, you know, more, more hematologists, more oncologists, a lot of psychiatrists. Even the VA was like flooding me with patients. Nice. So okay. that was a great, um, that was great to experience. You know that some of these doctors like, look, you know, cannabis may help you. Okay. Uh, you know, these conventional therapies have failed you. Um, so you know now we're kind of i think once federal legalization is announced you know with you know with schumer um and we get cannabis off the control substance list announced even if it does take a year then all the research you know all the docs are going to get in um and let me remind you you know the government's always you know they've been in cannabis since uh since 97 98 uh, you know, um, last year we had epidolics, so now we have five federal <laughs> FDA uh, cannabis approved drugs. Okay. Um, so is one it, is epidolics? Epidolex. Oh, That's epidolics. pure CBD in okay. a liquid form. So that was uh, approved by the um, FDA last year. Okay. <clears throat> and epidolics is for um, it was it was based off uh. Dr uh it's based off healing um, kids with Gervais syndrome or severe epilepsy. Okay. Uh, but there's an off-label use for epidolic since it's CBD that, okay. you know, doctors can prescribe that to their patients for chronic pain, for an immune booster. Um, it's off-label use. for If the doctor understands CBD, you can actually get a prescription for a pure CBD. Yeah. And uh, that's something your insurance may or may not pay for. But at least, you know, but there's five... Uh, cannabis drugs on the market now uh, so doctors have been prescribing these since they've been on the market you know uh, it's just too little of us and and not enough education out there you know definitely and it's hard to get some of the doctors to kind of be on board I don't I honestly think a lot of them are just not with the whole <laughs> holistic or wellness type treatment um, like Jennifer mentioned, they're more reactive and kind of want to fix it on the back end. But yeah, let's, yeah. Let's cut it before it gets here. That's so. a good point, man. A lot of the, you know, for my caregivers and, uh, and uh, you know, for my constituents, you know, anyone in the healthcare field, uh, medicine must be comprehensive. You must approach the patient, you know, mind, body, and soul. You got to ascertain their support. Um, ascertain any comorbidities, you know, because uh, some people, you know, everyone's different. So, you know, you know, we were taught in medical school that, you know, there's a gold standard treatment. And if that doesn't work, go to step two, step three. And then we're told that this gold standard of treatment, this one pill fits all. And we all know that's like terribly wrong. Healthcare disparities, uh, and it just caused a lack of mistrust with the healthcare system. So, as cannabis, as we build this new cannabis, as the cannabis industry starts to build, um, especially the therapeutic industry, <clears throat> you know, I definitely want to be in to do it ethically, you know? Yeah. The, I understand that everyone has a unique, everyone has their own ECS, endocannabinoid system. So, what works for me, what I like to inhale, vape, 
edibles, you know, I got to be careful when I say, hey, Mia, this helps me for my chronic pain. Because she has a different ECS. Right. So you can explain the cannabinoids, you explain the terpenes, explain the flavonoids, and it's up to her response, <clears throat> you know, and doctors have to understand that, that when we moving forward, we got to be ethical about it and understand that everyone is different. Right. And we have a chance to do it, you know. So let's get to the science. I like to know the science behind cool. some of the stuff. So how exactly is cannabis helping, like, in the brain or in the body versus how is it able to treat all of us, even though we're different? Um, and how does it work differently from the actual opioids, like opioids or antidepressants? Does that make sense? Yeah, great question. Okay. So the question is, like, how does cannabis work in our body? Well, that's a we have to understand yeah. the, the biology and the chemistry, you know. And what you're asking is about pharmacokinetics, you know. What does the body do to canna cannabis? Mm -hmm. We all know that cannabis is going to relax you, the pharmacology. But <clears throat> what's important to understand is that we have an en endogenous means within, okay. right? Simple. So we have an endocannabinoid system, just like the cardiovascular system, <coughs> just like your gastrointestinal system. <coughs> now, the endo, the ECS, just to make it brief, that was discovered in the 1980s, fairly, fairly new. Uh, we just found out about CBD and THC in the 1960s. So we're on the cusp of just bar barely understanding this plant. Um, so we have, we found, we, we call it endogenous cannabis. That means, do we have cannabinoids inside us? Right, right. Yes, right. we do. Right. We have a natural cannabinoid, and that's anatomide. So anatomide is part of our bliss molecule, and that's part, and that helps with reward system and dopamine, like, your body will release anatomide on a hot day to say, hey, you should, you should drink some water. Mm -hmm. And when I drink water, I get a burst of dopamine. Like, yeah, that's my reward. Like, yo, that's, your body, if, if, it, if this gave me, if this stressed me out or gave me cortisol, I wouldn't want to touch the water. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So that's an endogenous drug. So what cannabis does, it mimics, it copies what's in our body already, which is the anatomide. So we have THC and CBD. THC is the two cannabinoids that we know most about. But you heard of CBN by now? CBN? CBN. I haven't. It helps with, you have? Not. Now you heard of CBG, THCV. Uh, there's 60 more cannabinoids that we're discovering. Uh, you know, we know the five main terpenes to give it the smell. But going back to the two we know, CBD mm -hmm. and THC. Okay. Now, THC is psychoactive, so that's what we all know of. That gives you the high. Now, that, when you inhale it, right, that's the most common way to, to consume cannabis. When you inhale it, which is a great way for, that's a great delivery system of medication. You know, inhalers are used for asthma. Uh, COPD, bronchitis, we use inhalers all the time. Uh, so in Louisiana, you know, they have medical inhalers that look like asthma pumps. That's on the list, you know, eligible. If you have sickle cell, you can go to the dispensary and get an inhaler because it gets into your plasma within one to, th one to nine minutes. Wow. Yeah, it's very quick. Everyone, if you, if you smoke, that's why people prefer because you can titrate it, pull, pull to effect. But going back to the um, what, C, what a THC does, so once you light the cannabis up, right, because you have to light it, and that will decarboxylate it and turn that THC into that Delta-9 that everyone loves to talk about, right? Okay. Delta-9 is going to, you know, from your lungs, get across your blood-brain barrier pretty easily and stick to a receptor called CB1. Okay. Now, CB1, those receptors are, are densely populated in your brain, spinal cord, and a little bit in your periphery. And then I also talked about Epidolix, right, that drug that I can prescribe you guys, right? Um, now, that's CBD. Now, that's non-psychoactive. Now, there's, there are receptors in your brain, but mostly CBD is in your immune system, densely packed in your periphery. 
So <laughs> cannabis works by once your CB1 and CB2 receptors are activated, that helps with homeostasis, with, with your stress, with yeah. your neuro, neurological system, helps with homeostasis, with your reproductive system, with your gastrointestinal system. That's why it's so, that's why it's so beneficial with people with Crohn's, ulcer colitis, uh, ulcer colitis a leaky gut. Um, <clears throat> it's, it's great for your, your skin, mm -hmm. which is the largest organ in our body. Mm -hmm. I'm talking CBD beauty. I'm talking patches. I'm t you know, it's non-comedogenic. It's, uh, helps great for acne. It's because, uh, you know, acne is an inflammation problem and cannabis is anti-inflammatory. Uh, so those are, that's how it helps regulate all the rest of your systems. And we always talk about do cardio, do cardio, right? Yeah. Ten years from now, we're going to be like, yo, you need to do some cardio, you need to do some endo. And, like, you know, short for endocannabinoid system. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. So, I uh, think we got a phone call. Let's uh -huh. see. I'll go on and on about the science, but pretty much that's what we have at ECS. A speaker. I did. Hello. Okay. Hello. You've reached Mia with Sickle Cell Awareness 365, and we have Dr. Hodge. You have a question? Hello? Y'all well, hear me? Yeah, we hear you. You on live. Okay. What's up? I'm Burke Black. <laughs> Hello, Burke Blackman. How can what we? What up, Burke? <laughs> What's up, Sean? How you doing, man? I'm doing good, King. What the question? Uh, the questions all, man. Um, they're coming out. Uh, they've already came out with the Delta 13. Delta. Okay. I don't know much about Delta 13. There's not much research. That's that's. Uh, it's a it's on um, CBD uh, shops that are got. And, uh, they have Delta 8, Delta 8, of course. Right. Uh, Delta 10, you know, the plural wave. Yes. Vega. And, um, but yeah, they came out with Delta 13, man. Yeah. I'm trying to, I'm trying to make a, uh, uh, what is it, an ISO uh, labeling system for the state of Georgia. That's tight, bro. That's tight. Nice. Love the innovation nice. and research. And I got, I got people on the CBD boards and all that stuff. So, um, I'm a 39, I'm a young buck. I'm still 39. You know what I mean? But I've been smoking weed ever since I was 12. Damn. Are, why are you self-medicating for a reason, bro? Uh, or is it well, recreational? Right now because they tried to give me 109, this is in 2017. When I was, well, let me make a quick story on this. I was on, uh, I was at work. Well, I'm fucked up or nothing, you know what I mean? Because I, when I work, I work. I get it. Saying? Yep. And um, I was a wildlife nuisance uh, professional um, who was certified through the Department of Natural Resources and the Department of Agriculture. Okay. <laughs> so I was doing my damn thing, right? Do the damn thing. And um, and I went and I was training the guy because I was a manager. Right. I was training the right. You gotta fast forward it though, bro, because they the story we only got like a couple more minutes on the mic. Tell me. All right, that's a bit. That's yeah. a bit. I got you. Uh -huh. But anyway, I, uh, I grabbed my forty foot lateral route to remove a uh, bird's nest in a soffit. Ain't no thing, right? Right. I thought and you was on a hundred some pills though. You fell. Say what? What happened? How, what I thought you was on a hundred some pills. What happened with the bird's nest oh, yeah. though? Yeah. But anyway, I fell on concrete, cracked my head open like a watermelon. Damn. 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 Yeah, and that's forty. That's forty feet. So okay, and that's, that's the short story of that. Got it. Yeah, they tried to give me a hundred and ninety um, uh, Percocet tens for a month. Yeah, I'm glad you found so, cannabis, bro. I'm glad wait, and replaced it all with wait. cannabis. How are you? I know that's right. <laughs> How are you? Oh, Thank you so much. Thank you for calling. We appreciate your call. Yeah. Appreciate the stamp, night. family. <laughs> Thank and you. On, on top of that, I hate to run y'all long, but they gave me on top of that two milligrams bars Xanax. Damn, that's awful. A week. Well, I'm that's so glad awful. you're doing it naturally, baby. Yeah, I'm glad to hear you're yeah. doing a lot better. Thank you so much yeah. for sharing your story. We appreciate the call. 
So thank you, uh, yeah. Burke Blackman, for your phone call and your that was information. Dope. Glad that you're was, feeling better, boss. Yeah, that's such a transformation. Yeah. Um. So yeah, we have all similar stories like that. Like you mentioned, how you hurt your neck playing basketball, yeah. and just life experiences just cre gets us to the point of using cannabis a yeah. lot. So has there been any? I'm gonna switch a little bit. Has there been Anything any data? About the relationship between cannabis and COVID nineteen. Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. Tell us about it. Uh, there's been some uh, some bias articles and bias research by doctors like me that want to see cannabis really improving COVID. But uh, there's a cannabinoid that I want everyone to pay attention to. Um, CBD is a great immune booster, which we know, but also CBG. Okay. So CBG, uh, those studies with CBG and CBD um, will be used for the next superbug. So now everyone's worried about these superbugs, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. CBG kills bacteria like antibiotics. Really? Yeah, I know it's wild. CBD, right? Over the CBD, right? Kills bacteria. It's bacterial static. It's amazing. It is. Yeah. And it's amazing because I'm on like a bunch of antibiotics right now. And if I could do something other than that, that would be lovely because it's, yeah. it's taking up a lot of my day. Yeah. Well, yeah. Consult with your physician before you're on, uh, before you uh, stop taking your antibiotics. But, uh, you know, there's very, very helpful because what antibiotics do, they change. They're going to kill the bacteria that's they're supposed to kill or Good. help fight a virus, right? Because antibiotics don't help with a virus, and this is a virus. Okay. But they also kill the good bacteria in your gut. And so, you know, that's why, you know, when I would prescribe a, a Z-Pak, I say, hey, are you very sensitive to Z-Packs? Do I need to give you a Diflucan? Okay. The reason why docs will give you a Diflucan or, or something for yeast infections because that bacteria, which is, you know, you, have, you got an infection in your lungs, is going to kill that lung infection but it's also going to destroy some of your natural flora natural right, organisms right, right. from your mouth to your butt and also it's going to help destroy some of those microorganisms in your vagina mm -hmm. and change the ph and now you're getting bacterial vaginosis now you're getting right, yeast infections and guess what i got to get you another antibody right, for right. that too I hate you dig that. what i'm saying yeah and then your liver has this task of eliminating kidneys have a task of eliminating and uh we have know. another phone call yeah. let's see thanks for calling do i look sick this is mia who am i speaking with manaya hello manaya i have dr hodge with me you have what's, questions for us what's up manaya <laughs> you're on the air manaya we can barely we can barely hear you Yeah, that's good. Okay, I was wondering how long did it take for him to become a doctor? Oh, shit. Uh, four years of college, uh, five years of med school because I almost, dropped, almost got kicked out, almost fell out, uh, and three years of residency. So that's five, three, and four. Nice. Are you interested in becoming a doctor? Yeah, it's about 11 years, I believe. No, I'm a Phlebotomist. <laughs> That's awesome. We need you because doctors do. can't draw blood. We do. Yeah, we don't know how to draw blood. Y'all do. Yeah. Yeah. We and you always the... say, doctor, do it. And you be like, shit, you guys do it. You guys did all the training. And we as sickle cell patients definitely need yeah. you on the team to know how to find those veins and yes. everything. So keep up the good work. Thank yeah. you so much. Shout for out to all the phlebotomists that are very uh, patient and empathetic. No you. you know. Thank you. Yeah, find that vein. First time. <laughs> Listen, that's so serious. Find the vein first time. Yo, yo, there's no more people. There's no one more scared of needles than me. No way. Shit, no way. How many tattoos do you have, sir? I have over a, almost 150 hours, but the needle doesn't go into my veins. You so you probably act like a big baby. <laughs> Men are big babies. Period. But, <laughs> yeah, I can almost feel like I'm gonna faint. No. I swear to you. And I have to look when they're, I have to look at what they're doing. I can't no. Definitely. I Looking makes it worse. It doesn't. 
If I don't look, it makes it worse. You're tripping. This phone is off Shout the chain Shout out to people today. that don't look when they get a shot. <laughs> Shout out to the people that do. Yeah. We got to know what they're doing. No. All right, we have another phone call. Okay. This is Do I Look Sick? You are speaking with Mia and Dr. Hodge. What's your question? I want to ask Dr. Hodge if he looks at the patient's diagnosis as far as if he has an referred because uh, uh, who would he refer someone to? That's a great question. Yeah, um, I unfortunately, I, I had to take a pause because it's now a conflict of the state in October for doing the canvas recommendations. I would have loved to help you. Um, there's a doctor that I posted, and I can, I can sit, I'll shoot it to, to Mia, and Mia, was, Mia will, um, do you, you have uh, Mia's DM uh, or uh, IG? Are you, on no. are you on Instagram or Facebook? You can follow us on Sickle Cell Awareness 365 or SCA 365 and shoot me your um, your question and I'll make sure that you get it. Yeah, I'll give you. I'll shoot you the number. The doctor's uh, just getting his telemedicine situation straight, so he should be ready um, to start seeing uh, patients. And what's your name so I know who to look for? Tara. Tara. Yes. Okay. Tara, yes. All right. <laughs> And let me just write that down. So, and uh, Dr. Hodge, you're not accepting. You said you're not accepting any. Movement. No, not at this point. Not at this moment. I hope to start doing it again, but it's now a conflict, you know. Um, okay, okay. No. and Leah, let me just get that IG. And Dr. Hodge, I just love your videos with your dad and your mom. Your oh, appreciate it, man. That's Thank so you for the yeah. support. And my dad reads all the comments, so. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, okay. that you just make Thank his day you. in his mouth. Give me that IG, please. Our IG is SCA365. Sickle Cell okay. Awareness 365. Thank you so much for calling. You're welcome. Thank you, and have a wonderful day. Keep you doing too. what you're doing, Dr. Hodge. Thank you. Thank you're you. most welcome. You got a hotline today, Dr. Hodge. Yes, we're here to help. <laughs> I mean, I love that the village is stronger and... And we're all getting educated, and you know we're gonna look at cannabis as this is probably the first choice for me. Yeah. If that fails me, then we may go to conventional. But yeah. Yeah. cannabis first, exercise, sleep, just yeah. comprehensive, you know. Right. Absolutely. You, you know. So she did ask a good question. That was one of my questions about you taking new patients, but and I know you're not, but I noticed that you have pre rolls and capsules. Yeah. Yeah. Tell us about that. Man, a lot of R&D, and I just wanted to uh, make sure it was an ethical product that I could stand on. So, yeah, I got a pre-roll um, CBD, and it's got some CBG from CBG Flower, uh, zero THC in there. So it's good for all my folk, all my patients, all my caregivers, and even people that have a federal job that are not allowed to use CBD uh, because of the, the risk of testing positive. Um, I have a daytime focus with uh, with some terpenes that I believe really help, um, you know, lock in. And then I have a nighttime uh, CBD uh, capsule and that's got some linalool and some pinene in it, a little bit of myrcene, and that's really good for sleep onset, sleep duration, of course, your chronic pain, but definitely will kind of chill you out. Uh, the gummies are great. Um, I like them, you know. They work better for I do sleep like the than gummies. me. Yeah, the gummies got two different flavors on that. Uh, also have topical rubs. Um, um, topicals are great. Uh, if, you know, you haven't tried. You know, for a systemic, of course, it uh, bypasses the liver. So for people that don't like the effects of edibles, uh, you can always use a topical. And where can we order it from, or where can we get it yeah. from? Can we HolisticHempGeorgia.com, or uh, they're exclusively at a shop uh, off the Beltline called Holistic Hemp Georgia. Mm -hmm. So check it online, HolisticHempGeorgia.com. Nice. Um, grab what you need. Uh, I have multiple delivery methods, inhalation, uh, of course, oral, and transdermal. I had a question, um, Dr. Hodge. I kind of want to go back to something you said before the first caller. You were saying that in Louisiana they have um, like inhalers yeah. Yeah. that can deliver the CBD. Is that something that's recommended for people 
who like have asthma or pulmonary hypertension or is that something that's strictly for like people who deal with like chronic pain or um, like trouble sleeping like who benefits best from that product great question uh, all conditions benefit from inhalation so uh, you know cannabis is 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 the number one abused drug around the world but it's the oldest cannabis a medication that doctors used to prescribe in all civilizations. Uh, asthma, specifically asthma, COPD, that was one of the first conditions doctors used to make, give patients their cannabis because <clears throat> asthma is a bronchoconstriction problem. And the second part of it's inflammation. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah so Lungs tight. Now, what does cannabis do? So this inhaler of THC and CBD is going to help with bronchodilation and it's anti-inflammatory. Uh, so it's great for asthma, it's great for COPD. So that inhaler, what you're talking about is a metered dose inhaler. It's not just like, hey, smoke. I'm talking about, hey, you hit this pump, you're going to get the same exact dose every time you hit that pump. So it's true medicine. I can say hit that pump every four to six hours, just like albuterol inhaler, you know? So what would you say, would that be like the same thing for those who deal with pulmonary hypertension? A lot of people with sickle cell disease, well, I won't say a lot, but some yeah. people with sickle cell disease have pulmonary hypertension. Pulmonary hypertension is, is, is they do, they yeah. do. Uh, it's, it's different than asthma, it's different than your typical bronchitis or cause emphysema, you know, it's totally different. Um, I would have to, I would safely say, hey, we got to do longer term studies, bigger, not just five people. Let's get like 30 people enrolled, men, women, you know, and do a double blind <laughs> and do and do some more research <laughs> and, and see how we can effectively reduce or effectively treat pulmonary hypertension. Yeah. Yeah, but as far as asthma and other forms of COPD, yeah, in inhalation is great. Now, the reason why I say use an inhaler because some people don't want to combust. Mm -hmm. So that vape pen you guys seeing, you don't see a, a, a lighter, but there's a battery. So that's there's other ways that non-combustible ways you can inhale. Yeah. So. Again, there's a nebulizer. You've seen the kids with nebulizers, those face masks, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that you can, there's a nebulizer you can do to give people cannabis. There's a meter dose inhaler, like the albuter, like that yeah, pump. Yeah. But then you can also, there's combustible ways, like smoking, rigs, but you got to use some fire, you yeah. dig? Or you yeah. got to use a battery. So... I want to bring up something you mentioned earlier and we started to talk about before the show yeah. about the mistrust in the community mm. um, and not, of course, the black community as a whole, but definitely with us having sickle cells, first of all, having our own traumas with yeah. the hospital and the medical staff, then mm. seeing our friends go into the hospital and not make it out. How do we deal with that? Because I'm currently struggling on finding a hospital home that I'm comfortable with. Like I don't, at this point, I don't trust anybody, any hospital. Yeah. COVID is out, so it's still like, I don't mm -hmm. even want to go to the hospital because that's where the COVID is. So it's like, what do we do? Because I'm pretty much at home suffering. It's horrible. Um, and I don't believe life's all about how much you can endure. Uh, but for the sickle cell population, uh, it's, you know, th that crisis can happen at early as three months of age, you know. You guys know that, but a lot of people are ignorant of it. And as a physician, you know, we only get like two days teaching about sickle cell. <laughs> I'm talking about healthcare disparity started with education. Yeah. So we're a big part of the problem, you know. Uh, Say that again. We're, doctors are a big part <laughs> of the problem. <laughs> uh, and, until I hurt my neck and then, you know, joining the board of sickle cell, I was very ignorant of sickle cell. And not just... Of course, I can understand hey, sickle cell can't carry the, the oxygen, and if you can't carry the oxygen, that tissue is going to necrose. You're going to have it's going to die. They're going to lose a pangor. They're going to have a heart attack. But I didn't understand the trauma. Yeah. I didn't understand mm -hmm. like you know I saw my first dead body, took that person as a physician. You know when I was 
in the ER. I didn't I didn't lose my grandparents until I was in my 20s, you dig? Mm -hmm. So, but you guys are losing family, friends, <laughs> teens, and that yeah, they're getting younger. That will cause a disease in itself. So, it's the trust is not just ignorant as doctors and a lack of empathy. The, it's trauma, you know. If you if you you recognize someone that has a disease and they go to the hospital, don't come back. They transition and they're a teenager. You know, that's going to affect you. I don't yeah. care who you are, right? Yeah. So you're going to think about that for about six months. And what you have is acute stress disorder. Mm. You got acute stress disorder. You got sickle cell pain, sickle cell, you know, chronic pain. And once it lasts more than six months, by definition, you have PTSD. Mm. So you, it's not just... You want to say it's trust, it's, it, but it's your fault. Say, hey, I have trauma. I have now post-traumatic. I can think about getting a crisis. I start to get scared because I got to go to this hospital. Yeah. I got to get. I'm, I'm about to get. I'm getting nervous and upset because I got to meet a new nurse. My favorite nurse is not there. Oh my god. Oh my god. You know where's Sandy? Where's Sandy? You know what I'm talking about? Yes. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. And that's yes. that's that's not like. And then you're just gonna get admitted. And we're going to hydrate you, give you the morphine. But we never address the trauma, yeah. the, the psychological trauma. We never help you accept a loss. So you, you guys are angry, very bitter, confused, scared. Yeah. When we don't even help you process and help you grieve appropriately. So you follow me? I, I definitely do. Yeah. Do you think having a therapist come to the room i know when when we are admitted especially yeah. me for the first day yeah. i don't want to talk to nobody do nothing but after that especially those who have to be in the hospital often would that help to get some of that stuff out because i honestly have gotten to a point like people are going into the hospital and they're not making it home yeah and well, like you Mina, i'm sorry to interrupt but you're saying like would a therapist help I for one think it would help, but I think that it has to, what has to happen in that is that it has to be a therapist who is familiar with what people with sickle cell go yeah. through or people with chronic disease go through yeah. because a therapist who never sees a patient who deals with that may not be able to come at us in a way that is going to make us less mistrustful, make us put our guard down because it's like, you have no idea what you're talking about in this moment yeah. and you're kind of like blanketing, giving me blanket statements of how to process something you've never even heard of or dealt with before. That makes sense. Yeah. I think the message is going to be received better when you have someone that's close to the situation and someone that looks like you too. Very, very harder. important and which is very hard, you know, uh, again, black physicians make up only 3% of the physicians out here. Black male physicians is only like 1.5 of all the physicians you see. So, and it's going to take a doc like me that's been practicing 20 years <laughs> to truly get it, yeah. you know? It's like... You don't learn how to really drive until you like snow, hurricanes, yeah. you know, black ice. You, then you like, I can drive. You follow me? You know, I can shit a drink or two. I can drive. Trust me. Yeah. You dig what yeah. I'm saying? Yeah. So, um, and then like, if you guys just were just being told the honest truth, like, look, yeah. I'm, I'm going to try to control this crisis, but you got these issues and <clears throat> When I get you out this hospital, I'm going to get you to this therapist. I'm going to get you with this for your diet. Like, you know, I got this whole comprehensive plan. And I'm going to say, hey, do you agree? Yeah. And I'm going to empower you, you know? And you're going to be like, shit. All right, let me get me out this damn pain. Yeah. Let me get so I can start taking oral medications again because I can't wait to get off this thing, you know? Yeah. And let me get... And then let me get something for my trauma. Let me try. You said I can go to a ketamine clinic. Okay, I'm going to need some therapy, you know. Okay, other psychedelic medicines can help me, help, help reset my brain. Because once you have PTSD, those, those, those neural, the way your brain communicates is damaged. Mm -hmm. Those highways are, are damaged. And actually it gets to a point where 
you know, the brain is like Mars, like a bunch of gyre, a bunch of hills and valleys. It starts to turn smooth like a bowling ball, almost to like dementia, like Alzheimer's brain. So. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah. Was, that was a lot right Stress there. Stress is the devil. Yes, it is. Stress is the devil. Stress causes cortisol inflammation. Now, your cells are already sickled. You stress your body out more, that's going to cause the crisis. Uh, if you can't sleep, oh my gosh, that's when cortisol goes away and you feel more anatomized, you know, that homeostasis. And if you're not sleeping, stress 24-7, heart attacks, diabetes, stroke, mm -hmm. hyperlipidemia, cholesterol going up, early menopause, early andropause. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. It's not just an early death, like your life is like shitty, then you die. That's awesome. Yeah. That, that, I hope people are taking note. I, I definitely took a mental yeah. note. And I think for me, just the stress of having to go to the hospital is adding to the crisis I've, I've been having. So yeah. it's been a hot mess. I'm so but sorry that you have to kind of navigate it by yourself. Yeah. Uh, healthcare dollars have to be out, reallocated. You know, obviously, you know, and I think it's, it's, just, it's discrimination. And if it affected the majority, if this disease affected the majority, I believe there would have been a cure by now. Absolutely. So, yeah, I'm both. That's you. Yeah, let's not bullshit one another. So all yeah. I'm saying is, like, you have the trauma. Get in the hospital. Get out of crisis because you could have a stroke or heart attack just like that. Yeah. I mean, if, you know, your pancreas can stop. You, you, you'll be losing your spleen just like that. You don't know. Mm -hmm. It was fine, and then you woke up, terrible abdominal pain. We can't save your, you can't save that spleen. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, it's necrosis, the tissue's dead. We gotta remove it. You follow me? Yeah. You, you're gonna lose vision. You're gonna have a stroke in your eye. You'll be blind. Yeah. yeah. And that's a lot of a load to carry. Can, we it have, is a lot, but it's a happy burden to bear, not just for you, the person who has it, but for your caregivers, your family, yeah. your friends, yeah. and yeah. You know, you try to build a support system around yeah. you to help you yeah. maintain. But, I mean, they're not with you 24-7. They're not with you in the deep of the night when, you know, we're going into crisis. Because it always happens at the most inconvenient time. No. No. And I hide a lot of my pain. I'm, I'm in the house with my mom, but I hide a lot of my pain from her and my niece. So they don't... And they, why do you they, hide? They why know. do you feel like you have to hide? Honestly, Trying to be strong? That's one reason. I also know that when my mom sees me really hurting, it stresses her out. Yeah. When she, when she sees it alone, it stresses her out. And it's like, I don't want to stress her out. Yeah. Um, sometimes I just don't want to inconvenience her. So I, I, I hide it a lot. And then I turn around and blame her because she don't see it. Mm. But that's... Yeah. So the thing is, Mia... That's a tug of war on me. I don't is. like that because... I'm sorry. Go ahead, Jim. No, it's okay. Go ahead, no, I, don't, I hate that you have an internal tug of war yeah. because, uh, like, no one should be like, hey, rub some dirt on it, you know? Every, you know, you should be able to communicate yeah. to anyone, not just your closest, hey, how I, how I really am feeling. Yeah. And it shouldn't, you shouldn't have to worry about the way they receive it, if yeah. they try to minimize it, or if it stresses them out. Yeah. You did what right. I'm saying? Because you not talking about it is going to exacerbate yeah. your pain. And, and, and it, then it's going to make your dark hole bigger. You're going yeah. to feel even more alone. And I feel like yeah. if I talk about it, it makes it more real. Like if I don't talk about it, maybe it's not really there. Ah. I know. <laughs> no, I know it's still not... there. Yeah. And your friends know yeah. it. And you're doing yourself yeah. a disservice yeah. by not talking about it. I agree. And I agree. I feel more comfortable like talking about it with my friends. Before, when I had I had, had that nurse at NIH, and she, I was like, no, you know, I'm, I'm gonna thug it out. I'm good. I'm, yeah. I, I hold this pain. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm good. And she's like, no, that's not how we're supposed to be living. Yeah. That's not how yeah. you're supposed to be living. Yeah. I, I'm saying this as your friend, as your business partner, yeah. as your sister, because I, I love you. We love you, real shit. Don't have me crying on Hey, thing. that's real gems. <laughs> You're not supposed to do that. She's right. We do love you, man. That's going to cause your body more stress. 
And believe it or not, man, you have to don't don't let the disease just blow up every bridge you to people. Yeah. Yeah. And subconsciously you're going to do that because you're going to feel like I'm just not deserving to be around people. I just feel like a piece of shit all the time. I feel like shit, so it is what it is. You yeah. see what I'm saying? Yeah. And and then there'll be bridges that people are trying to help you. And it's not just for sickle cell. It could be with a chronic problem. It could be with addiction. It could be with this super inflated ego, you know? And whatever it is, you know, people will say, hey, I'm fucking with you. I'm trying to support you. And and you're so scared to trust the motherfucker. And he's going to be like, shit, I tried. Yeah. <laughs> Damn. Yeah. I tried. You know? I get it. Whose fault is it? Mine. I got you. Yeah. And I'm just not going to leave yeah. you alone. What'd you say? I said, I'm not leaving you alone. Yeah. So you I know. Love yeah. Me. I do. My sister tribe, including Jennifer, my friend Kanae, yeah. and my friend Dakota, yeah. they we hold each other accountable. We jump on each other. Like, yeah. you know you need to be in the hospital. Yeah. Like, we do each other the same way. And yeah. I feel comfortable talking to them because they, they know the struggle. They know what we go through. We might not have the exact same issues, but we all understand that sickle cell struggle. So let me get into this documentary before we uh, have to head on out of here. So yeah. let's, let's watch this clip of this documentary, and then we'll get into how you thought of this and what <laughs> what has come of it. Let's see. Let's check it out, Jack. You know, if you do something constantly, you become that, you know, so that's what I became. I, I never took the Oxycontin. I never took it. I, I, I would just set it to the side and I would smoke cannabis. Once um, I was introduced to Dr. Hodge, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying, he showed me a lot of stuff um, as far as like medicinal uh, properties, man, that I could use for the uh, situation that I got going on. People think this is all about getting high, but that's just a negative stereotype, a negative stigma. My name is Jeff. I'm from a group called Goody Mom, a group called Outcasts. My father's on 16 medications. He's been in the hospital for the last two weeks. He was up moving around, cutting grass, and kicking it just two weeks ago. No one understands the pain of my patients, but I do because I've been there. Dr. Hodge at the Georgia State Capitol for Sickle Cell Advocacy Day. He was there talking about the benefits of medical marijuana. The doctor said, we're going to put you on some new medicine. He was down in 48 hours. I had to take him to the hospital. I've been smoking weed since I've been 15, 14 years old. I just called this man. I said, man, my, my dad, man, bring him some medicine, huh? He gave me two, three pills and gave me some gummies. Set up in advance, so I'm saying that we're gonna be real about it. Man, come on, man. How many people gotta keep dying? How many people gotta keep telling you that we not change? Every doctor that I run into, this is not so stereotypical, right? She was just laying there with the pipe or the tube still in her mouth, and she just looked like she was asleep. And I wanted to wake her up, but. If I didn't get the help I needed, I would have been dead. I am not a drug dealer. I'm a healer. Committing a crime is never a good thing, but how could I sit back and watch my patients in pain? He and his doctor are trying to convince state lawmakers to not only allow the growing of medical marijuana, but also to expand the list of conditions that qualify to include traumatic brain injuries and PTSD. Nice. So what made you come up with this idea in... <laughs> Tell us about this documentary. Oh, man, that was just something. Uh, 
I guess the story had to be told somehow. Um, in the beginning, um, we all like we we all got the cannabis because of something. If it wasn't catastrophic, you know, yeah. it was something so personal that you didn't want another person to feel that way ever again. Yeah. So uh, the documentary was just a moment of transparency in Atlanta. Yeah. You know, pretty much people in Atlanta that I knew uh, had you on there to represent Sickle Cell, uh, Goody Mob, um, Patients, uh, uh, even, even, even a supplier. You know, just to say, like, just to be transparent. And uh, I believe that's the only way to really get to continue momentum in, in the cannabis industry. And for advocacy, we have to really just be honest yeah. while we're self-medicating uh, and use our voices and speak about cannabis in, in the, the most comprehensible form that you can articulate it in. And just keep on getting people on the registry changing the narrative this is first choice not last last option yeah. uh continue to break the stigma in church continue to get law enforcement on our side yeah. keep on fighting for decrim equity uh so on and so forth nice yeah. nice yeah. i love it and i'm so glad you did something like yeah. this to let people know um like the kind of the real deal behind people consuming cannabis yeah. and how it has helped so many families so What's the progress on the document? Like, how soon can we see the um, whole thing? Well, we're sh we're shopping it on some networks. Okay. And so what happens is, if they love it, uh, we'll have a big, big budget, and we'll shoot again, okay. and it'll be bigger, you know, and uh, we'll put it on 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 some type of distribution. Nice. Yeah. So people, the world can see what we're doing here nice. in Atlanta, because it's been great work. Yeah. You know, but we can't stop. Advocacy can't stop. Uh, uh, we all stand on the so on, on the shoulders of pioneers, gondrepreneurs. You know, people that have been in prison behind this plant. Yeah. Uh, people that are <laughs> dead behind this plant. Uh, people that have been robbed, and you know. So it's our duty to because we got the ball now. You know. Yeah. yeah. And, and and whatever they sacrifice, you know, it can't be in vain. Right. And whatever you've been through. You know, you know, you don't want another young African American um, queen with sickle cell feeling alone and feeling bad to, t to tell her own mom, "Hey, look, I'm going through a crisis because I don't want to stress you out." Yeah. You see what yeah. I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. We got to do more documentaries. We need way more dialogue, and we need to normalize. Like, look, pain is real. Sickle cell is real. You know, just because I look good, just because I, you know, I don't look sick. You know, look, yeah. I am going through it. You know. And the more conversations and the more transparency and the more communication we have about it, it's going to eventually trickle down to healthcare personnel. Because yeah. someone in their family might be a nurse. Oh, I heard about that, man. That shit's awful, man. It's not what they say, man. Them people, they just don't want to get high off opioids. They yeah. really be in pain, yeah. you know? Yeah. It's yeah. A, a trickle down to a doctor in their family or a dentist. Or so, or a policymaker that can say, "Hey, man, that shit's real. Let's put another twenty million in the budget yeah. for sickle cell." Yeah. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Communication is awesome. And I've reached out yeah. to a few of my classmates. Shout out to the class of 2001, North Atlanta Proud High School. <laughs> but um, a few of my classmates have finished nursing school, yeah. and one in particular has been in constant contact with me during her no nursing school years, and she'll speak up for us. You know, yeah. she she always asks how I'm doing, check in with me, I check in with her. Yeah. So she's I got her on the team, yeah. and it was another young lady who just finished, and I reached out to her, and I'm like, listen, if you have any questions i'm here i don't yeah. mind inbox me call me because i think it starts like you said it starts there trying to educate the people who we depend on really. absolutely so absolutely so that's awesome yeah so thank you, you have any more questions jennifer no i'm good i'm just so thankful that you came to bless us with your presence i'm sorry that i wasn't there to meet you in person yeah. this time but there will always be a next time well, Absolutely. Thanks for having me. Ladies, keep on uh, leading, leading the charge. You know, um, you guys are doing great, important work. Uh, you know, uh, there's, a, there's a 
someone out there that might be going through it right now that's going to start speaking up or maybe try to use cannabis or yeah. maybe wean off some of their Roxy's and Percocets or mm -hmm. their Xanax. Mm -hmm. Or maybe they can start talking about a death they had or a friend, a homie they just lost. Yeah. And maybe start understanding what that did to them, you know? Mm -hmm. So, yeah. thank you. Thank you. Let's get thank into you. these sponsors before we get out of here. Yeah. I want to thank Mr. Dan Moore in the Apex Museum. Um, hopefully he'll be opening up soon mm -hmm. and we can get back there, especially for our open mic in September. But you guys just have, have to see this museum, period. Um, so thank you to the Apex Museum. Thank you to Tanya Robinson at Kids Stop Daycare and Learning Center, who's still making it do what it do with the babies in school um, and the Black Professional Network. And thank you, Dr. Hodge, um, yes, our newest board member. <laughs> I'm on that board, too. I'm so holding you accountable. You're going to do some great shit. I'm super excited <laughs> yeah. you, that you have officially joined the team. Um, yeah. And I'm, I'm ready to work. I'm always ready to work. Thank you for having me. It's my honor to be asked to be on this, uh, this esteemed board. So I awesome. appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Oh. All right, let's head out of here. Hold yeah. tight. All right, we out of here. See y'all in two weeks. Nah, right, see y'all. Bye.